Good afternoon, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the carving shop. And uh, before I get started on this video, I wanted to take a minute to thank all of you that have subscribed to the channel. Uh, we have over 1,050 subscribers. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe, um, and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. That way you get any updated content that I post, you'll get notification of that, and so you won't miss out on it. It's very encouraging to me that uh, that many people are interested in carving decoys in some fashion, whether you're just starting out or whether you've been carving for a long time. I've gotten encouraging notes from people that are thinking about carving, and these videos are encouraging them to give it a try. I've also got um, communications from people that have been carving, gave it up, and are trying it again um, because they've been inspired by these videos. So that's very rewarding to me. That's the goal of this channel. So this is phase two or session two of carving this Drake canvas back uh, cork bodied hunting decoy. It's a magnum. It's a little upsized from life size. The last time in the last video we roughed out the head. It was pretty rough when we finished. And I said I would spend some time sanding, and I've done that. And I'm going to give you some close-up shots of the head after the sanding part of it, and also talk about a few tips related to that. And then we're going to focus on the installation of eyes today. In the mallard videos that I've put together, I used plastic wood and smoothed that with acetone solvent. In today's video, I wanted to give you an alternative, a water-based alternative called Epoxy Sculpt, A-P-O-X-I-E Sculpt. This has been widely used in the decoy carving community for a long time. It's a two-part uh, water-based epoxy putty, and we're going to use that and water uh, instead of plastic wood and uh, solvent in this video. That way you have a couple of alternatives to consider for eye installation. If we have time, we'll start to move into the shaping of the cork body today as well. It depends on the length of the video. I don't like these to get too long uh, where people lose interest. So let's get started. Okay, before we move into eye installation, I wanted to give you a some close-up views of the canvas back head after sanding. And I want to, you to notice a couple of things that I think are important. I've got a, a light up above here, just an LED uh, light that I use for band sawing, but it's a great down light for casting shadows from directly above. You can see the shadow in the eye channel area there. And I use this light in, in my bandsaw platform a lot just for this purpose, um, especially on gunning decoys where uh, there isn't going to be a ton of paint and detail to cover up things. And if you have a flaw in the shape of this head, uh, no amount of paint is going to cover it up. So I spend some time under a good light like this and make sure that I, I'm not casting any unusual shadows that are going to look funky uh, as the bird projects from a distance. And what I mean by that is uh, an unusual shadow cast on a head really can take away from the softness and the character of the head in a big hurry. So I just use a light like this and I'm using 120 grit sandpaper, so not ultra fine. And I'm just going around the head looking for any flat spots, any tool marks that I want to get rid of. Make sure I have good roundness. Make sure I have good symmetry. Because again, the form is so critical in a gunning decoy, especially in gunning competition decoys. The form is critical, and you basically have to convey everything through form and a relatively simple paint job. 
So spend some time from all directions looking at the way your carving is projecting. I want to note one area in particular here. I did take this ruby bit and hollowed out a little bit uh, in this area. And it. I hope you can see that in the video. That casts a little bit of a shadow in that area, and I think that's very characteristic of the canvas back, along with this indentation uh, in the middle of the bill. I'll show you this side. It's not everything, it's just something. It gives the bill a little bit more shape. It maintains the integrity and the strength. I'm not putting any details in that area other than the upper and lower mandible separation, which is allowed. No details on the end of the bill. And uh, again, 120 grit is fine enough uh, for me in the way I carve decoys to finish sand and, pr and prep for the next step. So that's enough on that. I hope that is helpful perspective. And we'll move on to the eye installation. All right, just like in the Mallard carving video, I'm gonna use my pattern and dividers to get this distance between the back of the bill and where it meets the face here and the front of the eye and transfer that to the carving. on both sides. Now I'm gonna use my circle template and a pencil. Mark the location using that divider mark of the eye. And I want to make a point here. You can see this was the drilled through hole that I drilled through when I was in the flat based on this location. It's critical to me to go back and reestablish where that eye should be. And you can see the proper position for this eye is crowded a little to the front of, of my hole that I drilled through. So you might ask, well, why do you even do that? I'm not sure, <laughs> but I like knowing where that is in the flat. But when I'm making my final call on the position of the eye, I'm going to go to this dimension. And I think it has to do with all the angles and the geometry that has been created in the wood. It's critical that you locate this eye in the proper position. So I'm not going to go with this hole. I'm going to go with my divider and hit it right there. It's also very critical we get these uh, eyes level across this way. And so I take a quick look from the front after I mark my circles. And I've got, you probably can't see it in the video, but this eye is higher than this eye. Even though I tried to follow the drilled mark on both sides. So I'm going to work with it with my pencil and raise this up a bit and do the best job I can before I've dug out any holes or set any eyes to get these hole positions where I want them to be so they're level across here and we don't have a cockeyed looking bird from the front especially. Once I've got those penciled where I think they should be, I'm gonna use a little gouge little cup-shaped wood gouge and very carefully 
follow that guideline around. And dig in maybe oh, a quarter of an inch. And then pop that out. I'm going to do that on both sides and then we'll be ready to install the eyes. And for the epoxy sculpt, you use 50-50 uh, mix. So I just estimate how much material I'm going to need to do two eyes. And now you need this material together. And this takes some time, but it's important to knead it. You can see there's still inconsistency in the color. I'm going to knead this until it's all one color and thoroughly mixed. And uh, you don't have to watch me knead putty. I'll be back in a minute. Now you need a, an old paint brush uh, just to dab some water and a little bit of water in a cup. And I've got this mixed to a consistency that looks good. So I'm going to split that in half, save half of it for the next eye. I'm going to get my eyes ready. There's some pretty decent working time on this putty. I normally let it dry overnight. It will stiffen up, oh, you know, maybe in a half an hour, but uh, you've got some decent working time with it. The first thing I want to do is wet the eye socket. and the area surrounding the eye socket. And this will make the tupelo swell a little bit, uh, but we'll do, do some light sanding afterwards. But it's important to dampen that so it will help this bond in place. And then I'm gonna take a piece of it and just press it into the eye socket. Make, sure there's no gaps or holes back in there as much as possible. Then I'm going to get my eye and focus on this front dimension again. Make sure I'm at the front of the opening and begin pressing that down into place. And we want a little bit of a, an angle in and an angle down on the eye. Not extreme, but a little bit of angle there. And I'm going to check from the front to see how much eye is exposed. That looks about right. So I'm going to use my finger... And now I'm going to wet my finger and begin shaping this. Since it's a water-based putty, you can use a wet finger. You may choose to use um, rubber gloves to do this. I'm just doing it freehand today. I needed to press that in a little bit more. It was still a little too bug-eyed sticking out. I'm re-wetting my finger and basically pressing and smoothing over the area and smoothing it into the surrounding wood. And this water does a nice job of kind of feathering the water-based epoxy out into the wood. Now I'm going to get some other tools and I'll be right back. Now I've got an old worn out scrubber paintbrush and I'm using it kind of as a sculpting tool to begin to move the epoxy around and shape it the way I want it. Get some material out of the way and begin to shape a little bit of a, a lid. A Drake canvas back, I prefer not seeing a big deep shadow in the eye area. A live bird, there's not much of a groove in that area around the eye. 
on a live canvas back. So, you know, you can exaggerate it a little to give the bird some attitude, but just be careful you don't go too far and create a big deep shadow where you can't even see the eye because it's hidden in the shadows. I've also used dental tools. My dentist gave me these for free. They're just um, worn out, but they're great for this purpose. Uh, so you may want to ask your dentist if he has any old dental tools available. So I'm doing some rough shaping and then going back with the water and feathering things out again. And I'll just keep working this back and forth until it looks the way I want it to. I'm gonna take a little bit more putty and put on the bottom of the eye here and feather that down. Just added a little bit more putty down below. And now I'm using the water and my finger and you can press pretty hard on this material. It's a little cold in the shop right now, so it tends to make this putty a little stiffer. If you're doing this in the summertime, it works a little easier. So I've got some additional material below and just to shorten the video, that is the process and you go back and forth and uh, work the eye opening to the shape that you're looking for. I'm opening that eye back up a little bit, taking some material out in the forward channel here going to the bill and I'll just keep working that back and forth. But that gives you the general process. And if you do this right and work it long enough, there's very little sanding that has to be done when you're done. This is a gunning decoy, so I'm not gonna spend time putting lids on and, and details like that. But this putty is good for that. You can let this material dry and then do some carving to create lids and things like that if you're in an, into a decorative decoy. I'll come back after I get the other eye installed and we'll take a look at it together. Now I'm just using a little old worn out detailed painting brush and doing some of the final shaping of the eye. The shape of the eye opening can make a big difference in the appearance of your decoy. If your pupil is low in the eye or high in the, the eye, uh, it can just change the look dramatically. So really spend some time on this, getting your shape the way you want it. Do another quick check. Looks like I'm right on where I wanna be up and down, and also front to back. Now I've worked that eye shape to about where I want it. I'm gonna to move to the opposite side. Before I begin the other side, I'm gonna knead this again to warm it up, make it a little more flexible. It gets pretty stiff in the cold shop. All right, I'm continuing to work the shape of this eye. I'm gonna open this up a little bit more on the rear edge of the eye, and then take a look from the front and make sure the eyes are level as you look across from the front of the decoy. That's critical. It's easy to get one high or low. So that's the basic process for using epoxy sculpt. All right, I think we'll make that the end of session two, and that way we can focus all of session three on rough shaping the cork body. But we'll let this epoxy sculpt dry, and then we'll do a little sanding to blend things out carefully, and then we'll be ready for the body. Until next time, Tom Christie signing off.